Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be BSL Season 15 Hasu League. Round of 16, Group D. First match between Machine and White. 6 o'clock location, we have White starting as the White Protoss. I always appreciate that he does that. We have Machine in the upper right hand corner as the Grey Zerg. Let me actually see. No, I can't do the color swap on this one. This is going to be on Turbine, which is a very interesting map. I'm going to favor Machine and also... I gotta say, uh, I am biased towards machine across the board. It's really hard. The worst commentary I ever did in my life that actually the the heroic what, legendary, that's the better way to put it, legendary Total Biscuit called me out on. I actually did it with end control. It was machine versus, uh, who was he playing? Kiwi Kaki. Kiwi Kaki put on a clinic, Was dan this is StarCraft 2, Dancing Stalkers, and both in control and I were just like, uh, because we did, because he was like, we should have been like, yeah, keep it get styling here, but instead we were like, no, machine losing, boo. But just so you guys know, I have uh, bias towards machine just because he's probably the nice, he's an awesome dude. He just is. He's an awesome dude. Anyway, very strong macro oriented player. He actually, I think, was in Gosu League last season, which just shows you how, As how Hasu League feels like with the Chinese players being added, it's just elevated the level of play across the board. Machine's still capable of being up there. I feel like White is one of those guys that can peek in and out as well. White went pretty deep last season. We've seen him as a very strong Protoss player. And so he's not one of those guys that Machine can just roll over. So it's not an instant win. But at the same time, Machine's macro play, his defensive Zerg style, is very, very strong. And in that regard, I mean, this has been his entire career, is once he kind of gets into a gameplay set, he plays very machine-like and very mechanically. And his mechanics, particularly his late-game macro mechanics, are very, very strong. Looks like we're seeing a... I think that was an 11 hatch, maybe a 12 hatch from Machine. Gonna follow it up with Spawning Pool. This is on Turbine. We have that free natural expansion, which makes things a little bit more creative. I'm curious how this is gonna line up and ZVP in particular. I guess it's like a, yeah, it's kind of a free forge expand map where you can just go ahead and get that Nexus and then the forge potentially, yeah? We'll see how it plays out. We are seeing a drone scout to the south. The drone should be able to slip in before the cannon since that was Nexus first. Never mind the drone able to sneak away. So instead the Overlord gonna go ahead. The one problem with this is the Overlord makes its way to the front. It doesn't mean it's confirmed the natural expansion, but it looks like it's going to go ahead and camp towards the main. In the meantime, a quick third from Machine. Upon seeing so, he, upon seeing the front, he's like, okay, no cannon yet? That means absolutely that was Nexus first, which means I can go ahead and grab my third base without too much trouble. So very aggressive macro play here from Machine. Has that extractor coming online. It's going to go ahead and meander to confirm absolutely that, that Nexus was there and it wasn't just kind of a flub in build order. Probe making its way across. Second Overlord looks like it wants to go ahead and get eyes on the front door. And I think what he might do is just kind of camp this Overlord to this corner to try to confirm whether there's a second gas or not. And play the match from there. We do see a gateway on the front door. Kind of a staggered seal here from White. Using it with a kind of an interesting... Maybe he's a little bit less accustomed to this map. I mean, he, he knows the map, obviously, because he knew to grab that natural expansion. But at the same time, this is kind of a... This is an odd seal. I wonder if this is like the official seal for Protoss or not. Probe looks like it's going to go ahead and meander in. It sees that third base on the low ground. Two Zerglings out there. And there's not a lot that... So despite having that scouting information, there's not a lot that White can do about it except for go ahead and play, potentially get that standard Corsair. That cannon getting some free damage on that Overlord. Bit of a distraction. Layer along the way. And I think this Probe... So Hydalus Den... Interesting. So I think this is going to be still that four hatch style. Probe is wiped out. I don't think this is going to be a 973. If this was a 973, this is a very brave map to do it on. But we do have seven drones right here. And is that what Machine's showing? So eight. We'll see if he plops the three down here. He's Usually you don't go layer first behind that. So I think this is going to be more the, the four hatch. But it is possible he is just going to go Hydra, Lurk, and just contain which I could see being very, very strong in this map. We do have that second gas going up. The Overlord a little out of position to go ahead and confirm that. Cybernetic score actually being hidden out of view towards the front. Single Zealot blockading that front. No, So yeah, now we see the fourth hatchery. This is possibly also just going to be five hatch Hydra play. Hydra speed being upgraded. And 
I kind of like this decision because it. Uh, Overlord uh, just barely gets out. Confirmed Citadel of a Dune. There is a second gas, so it looks like White's thinking about playing or DT heavy. There's an Ordin Overlord here, but Machine, the way he's playing this, what he can just do is once he has his hatcheries up, he can even skip Spire, I feel like, and just invest in Hydralisks. Get Hydralisks kind of in a soft contain on the front, get Lurkers contained from there, and just continue the macro play as soon as everything's in position and just contain White. And it's going to be up to White to go ahead and break out and do something about it, which... I wonder if Protoss actually at large kind of, because this, yeah, it feels like a good game plan here. I wonder if Protoss at large might even opt to just go for Robo uh, Reaver, Corsair Reaver. So there's the fifth hatchery. Lurkers are being built. Hydralisks are not yet pressing towards the front door. We have plus one spines being upgraded. Maybe once this fourth hatchery is online, that will start being the flood situation. So now they're starting to move down. But yeah, so basically the Hydralisks just can... Plop down here, go for a nice little contained situation. There's only four zealots here currently. Plus one weapons is being upgraded. And this is going to be critical that these there's sufficient Corsair produced and that the Corsair uh, actually can go ahead and wander around and keep those Hydralisks back off the front. So that is going to force some Hydralisks to be pinned back here to go ahead and defend the Overlord count, which could be helpful. We do still have an Overlord on the front, Hydralisks nearby. Zergling going ahead and testing. This Corsair is going to confirm there's kind of a skeleton crew of an attack force. And this Corsair, so it looks like it got an Overlord kill, but it got wiped out otherwise. Man. So White, I feel like Machine is really closing the gap here rapidly, and there's Lurker Tech. So now what Machine needs to be careful about is he needs to make sure that he doesn't overbuild Lurkers, and as long as he keeps enough Hydralisks here on the front, you can just get like, I don't know, three lurkers down. And then you can see the four morphing here in the background. This is going to turn turn into a very tough contain very, very rapidly. Where zealots are going to try to run down with... Yeah, maybe zealots running down into a lurker field. That's just no bueno. The Corsair, just a single overlord kill, not really worth the investment. Looks like he's pausing. So, interesting. So, did he... No, so plus one weapons wasn't canceled, but there's a pause on producing additional Corsair as well. Which means a little bit less of an investment. I wonder if White is just recognizing the situation, wondering what to do about it, but... It, potentially too little too late, because the Lurker is already... already here. Does Is Overlord Speed upgraded already? Overlord Speed's not yet upgraded. Overlord Speed not really even necessary right here. So now you have Hydralisks and Machine very comfortably. You can go ahead and take... Honestly, you can grab this base and grab an additional base on top of it. Because this is going to be a huge challenge to walk out of. And honestly, it's one of those things where, like, maybe there needed to be a Reaver. The Dark Templar isn't going to help you because there's already a detection. And in the meantime, I'm not seeing a Robo or anything to deal with these Lurkers. So Dark Templar wandering down. Looks like managed to get a Zergling kill, but ate a lot of damage on top of it. And so, yeah, Corsair is going to need to suicide into something. It looks like two have managed to wander up. They might be able to take this Overlord out at the main. Overlord Speed now being upgraded, but right now Machine in a commanding position in this match. Maybe some some incredible Psy Storms could make this work. But even then, look at the spread. Yeah, this is looking worse and worse for White right now. Machine playing this perfectly. Plus one weapons also online, which means those Lurkers and Hydra is going to hit even harder. And also, all of the upgrades, I believe, have been completed for the Hydralisks, which means... Yeah, they can deal with, uh, they can snipe those high, those high Templar if White's not careful. So White in making the heavy investment in plus one, but it's only two Corsair, which means they're not going to be able to get as much as they want. But Dark Templar trying to sneak out to the corner. It looks like it just barely able to draw out. The Zealot's trying to run out to the other angle, so it looks like they are finding gaps, but they're eating a lot of damage. So they're able to sneak out, but they ate a lot of damage, and those Hydralisks are going to be in hot pursuit, and that's plenty of Hydralisks to go ahead and deal with that. There's already something calling in here, and a bit of a SimCity, and a bunch of Hydralisks there to deal with the follow-up attack. And I think he was hoping that these Lurkers would unburrow and engage the Contain, but Machine has enough of an economy where he can just go ahead and let this go, although this White might be able to get some damage done to this 12 o'clock location. Sorry, 1... Ah, 11 o'clock. 1 o'clock. We'll call it 1 o'clock. Hydralis moving in, gonna try to focus fire this next, the, sorry, the Nexus, the Hydralis, the Hydralis then? Wow, I can't talk all of a sudden. Able to get the hatchery. 
And it looks like he's going to be able to wander out with the Zealots. More troops able to peek out the shuttle with four Zealots in it as well. Hydralis kills, so White making a match of it. Unfortunately, the shuttle getting wiped out immediately. So I, even though this hatchery was damage done, I don't know that it was sufficient damage to put White back in this match. Because Machine still has, it looks like he's going to fill in the rest of this contain. There's still some Zealots wandering around, but not in large numbers to get something accomplished. These two Corsair have not been active. And so now it's going to be up to White to just punch through. And Machine has the supply lead, which is usually a scary situation. Overlord speed now finished. Sorry if there's background noises, by the way. There is construction happening in the house on this replay as well. The shuttle was wiped out. Another shuttle being produced. And this is going to be, yeah, it's going to be hard to walk through this. More lurkers and a lot of troops. Even a drone wanting to be here to just see the front. I saw the front lines, dad. I mean, who is technically dad or mom for a drone? Like, it's all one, it's weird. Kind of messes with stereotypical family dynamics. Corsair also taking damage as he was trying to wander back out. It looks like a single Hydralisk going to force them back. But just look at the mini-map. You can just see, just tells the story. Bunches of gray out here. A bunch of white cornered in. Waiting to maybe make a run to get out of here. Machine, though, this does help slowing down this fourth base. Because otherwise, Machine's economy was just going to roll way, way, way out of control. But even so, still in a firm position. Plus two weapons is now making its way. Queen's Nest dropping to potentially make the way towards Hive. White opening up the front. Oh, great side storm on those Hydralisks as they were walking up to go ahead and potentially pick off that High Templar. Machine fanning out, knowing that the attack is coming. Still additional, there's a lot of side storm left here. So now the question is, is how successfully does Machine pick off these side storms or how well does White land the side storms? Observer wandering out to go ahead and get eyes on what's here. Single side storms being dropped on lurkers to try to soften things up and get that clear. A shuttle, did I miss a shuttle drop? Might have missed a drop. Shuttle sneaking into that bottom right hand corner. I'm gonna just assume I missed a drop. A lurker immediately taking the place of the one that died. Another great size storm obliterating the better part of a control group and it looks like triggering the rest of them to go ahead and get wiped out. But machine immediately filling those troops right back in. Supply counts are close. Cannon being removed so that those troops can get a little bit of a faster flood. That 12 o'clock base, well, 1 o'clock base is up and running again, but is not yet saturated. A lot of these drones not yet saturating the front. But still, White is in the situation, the predicament, where he needs to move out. Now making movements. Good side storm on that middle group of Hydralisks. Good side storm to the left. And another three great side storms but unfortunately not sufficient to breach. And the Dragoon's eating a lot of damage and the Observer picked off. So Machine in the midst of that fight, picking off the Observer critically. So now White backed up and locked in. Another Psy Storm catching a good group of Hydralists. That High Templar again getting picked off. And without the Observer, just a lot of damage. Another good Psy Storm. So now the defense force looking thin, but the lurkers are still there and they're still now an observer is rejoined. But White's troops have been sufficiently softened up and or eliminated where Machine can very quickly reinforce this. More lurkers being morphed to the upper left. Let's see if Machine reinforces. Another good side storm. And this is White's moment, but instead he's going to back off. The Observer was picked off again. It looks like, I think, the Observer was picked off. More Psy Storm, catching a bit of a Lurker, but Machine just reinforcing with the additional Lurkers that he morphed to the upper left a few seconds ago, and now White is again, yeah, just locked in. And that was a, that was a lot of Psy Storm and a lot of troops he expended, basically to not get purchase out of his base. Another Observer online, so he's going to make another attempt at this. More Hydralis to the left. Corsair trying to push that Overlord back so that Observer can stay online to work on those softened up lurkers. But now Machine rededicating the troops forward. Great side storm on those Hydralists once again. Looks like he might have cleaned things up. Supply counts are even. Overlord's wiped out, which means that Observer cannot be picked off or detected. And I'm not seeing 
enough troops, but White doesn't have enough troops left to punch through. More Hydralisks now pushing through to reinforce and shove White back into his base. More Lurkers reinforcing as well. And in just a moment, an Overlord's probably going to be here to potentially pick off additional observers. So White not able to break out once again. And now, things looking dire for White. For a second there, I thought he was able to, to make it through, but Machine just very comfortably reinforcing. Plus two weapons. Also, they're on the Hydralisks and the Lurkers, which means they're going to hit particularly hard. Hive is here. And would not be shocked to see Defiler Plague, maybe even Ultralisk at this stage. Machine can go ahead and grab additional bases, do whatever he wants. The four Zealots that were MIA for an extremely long period of time starting to make their way across. Maybe they want to take another shot at the, the 1 o'clock base. Unfortunately, I don't think they're going to get a lot there. Machine continuing to reinforce with a lot of Hydralisks to the north. We finally see a Reaver poking away, but a little bit far forward. The Observer picked off. Second Observer is not picked off, but the Reaver's picked off as well. The Zealot's trying to get to the north. Instead, a Lurker blocking the ramp. And the Zealot's not able to get anything done. And once again, Machine reinforces. It feels like I've said that several times now. Machine reinforcing and blocking White out. So very comfortably, summarily going for that plus three Spines attack. Does have Hive. I don't see... Maybe just for the upgrades? Because he hasn't made any move towards Ultralisk or anything else. Not that he's needed to. Still hasn't grabbed an additional base. The 1 o'clock base decently saturated, but I th Machine, as long as he keeps... I don't think he even needs to push anything else. As long as he keeps White boxed in, he is going to win this match. Shuttle made it way, its way back. It looks like it's just here to scout. Taking a lot of damage. Might peek through here. Yeah, looking for a route, but it doesn't have anything in it. Drawing some Hydralisks back. It's now going to get taken out. Yeah, just wanted to draw those Hydralisks away from the front. The Zelts, again, making a sprint and a run towards that third. Great side storms to the right there. There's only one Lurker remaining to the middle, but there's still great side storm. There's still plenty of Lurkers to the left and more Hydralisks pressing down into this. The Lurkers filling in a bunch of High Templar exposed and it looks like they're not going to make their way back into the home base. So Machine's defensive contain holds. He's grabbing yet another base in the upper left-hand corner. And there's some Zealots nearby just to watch, I guess, the front continue to get held. And now Machine's in an economic position where even if he loses this front, which it looks like he might here momentarily, it doesn't matter. He's even... On supply, he's ahead in workers. He's continuing to press into this, though. And this is probably going to be GG from White, honestly, once this gets cleared out. Cancellation on that Archon Morph. It looks like a High Templar going to get picked off right there. Like, even if he busts out here, this is such a late third. We're looking at a third... At, what, the 18-minute mark? 19-minute mark, maybe even 20 minutes by the time it's up and running. More Hydralis pressing in. And there's GG from White. Yeah, Machine really controlling that top to bottom. We'll see if it turns out better in game two. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Regardless, thanks for listening.